in this tutorial we're just going to go over um, alkanes. I just want to um, briefly explain how we draw them. So here's an alkane. We're also going to cover alkenes and alkynes and I just want to basically go over uh, the structure and the different types of structures we can have. So this is more of an introductory lesson really. So notice here I've got these single bonds, these single lines. The, the letters as you probably were, uh, represent um, the element carbon and hydrogen. And these bonds represent the sharing of electrons between this element and this element. And this bond here is between this element and this element. So we call this a chemical bond. If we um, had um, double bonds, then that would look something like this. So we now have a, a double bond. And if you look at some other tutorials, um, on, on the PLP tools, but we'll, you'll know that these are called um, uh, pi bonds and these are made up from two P orbitals, a P orbital on the carbon and another P orbital on this carbon. We're not going to go into the detail of the uh, actual shapes of the orbitals in this tutorial. I, I'm, I'm more concerned about um, representing organic molecules in different formats. So I'll just move this alkene out of the way and we might bring that back in in a second. So if I was going to draw a molecule, say I was going to um, draw um, something like this. So I'll just draw this molecule here. Um, put an OH on there, NH here. And CH3. That's how I draw it freehand. Okay, so that's um, paracetamol as it happens. So if I draw a paracetamol like that, I'll just move it over here, then it's not quite in that format. And that's because organic chemists uh, use shorthand within the shorthand, and this can vary as well. So this CH3 represents this group here, this CH3 group here. So just circle that in red. So um, let me just change that actually to red. So this group here is a CH3 group and that can be written as CH3 like that. Or sometimes we can totally omit this group. Now I'm not a big fan of omitting the CH3 because the terminal here, the end point of the line, represents um, a CH3 group as well. So you notice I don't have hydrogens on this benzene ring here. So if I go back to my brush and just add, if I actually put in all the elements that are present in this molecule, you'll see very clearly where they go. The CH3s there, there's nothing else, and no other NHs, there's no hydrogen stuck on there. But with carbon, we can sometimes emit the hydrogens because it's implied that the hydrogens are present because of the structure. Now you need to know that as an organic chemist and this is um, with experience you gain that knowledge. So let's draw paracetamol again with a different structure. So I'll draw it, I'll draw it in blue this time, if this works. So this time there's my CH3 group, NH. And I'm deliberately drawing these structures differently. OH. So that's another one. An organic chemist would know that that's what's called an acetyl group here. This CH3, C double bond O, is an acetyl. And that's where the paracetamol bit comes from. This being, this is actually called the para position here. This is acetyl. And that's an alcohol bit. So that becomes paracetamol. And that's how it's named paracetamol. But that, we won't go into the, uh, the naming of paracetamol in this tutorial. Okay, so let's go on about um, alkenes now. Let's just um, look at alkenes. So I've moved these out of the way. Just move them over there, out of the, out of the view. I'll leave paracetamol up. Now let's have a look at, at this alkene we brought up before. We have C double bond with four hydrogens stuck on it now. And it's very similar in structure to that. 
So I'm going to draw a benzene ring, just one benzene ring. What colour have I got? Black, okay. Right. So just go and draw a benzene ring. Okay, it's not quite a benzene ring until we put the double bonds in. Now that can be written differently as well. Sometimes you'll see a benzene ring um, written like this. I won't put the hydrogens in this time. Sometimes it's written like that. And that's because these electrons circulate around the ring. But we won't go into that now. This one's called the Kekulin structure. Kekulin structure. I think that's where the uh, accent is. I might have got that wrong. But that's Kekulin structure there. And that's, um, that is represented, this circle in a benzene ring just represents the, the true form, which is, is constantly moving around these double bonds. So as you can see, we've got several different forms. We've got the ones where we put all the elements on and indicate which um, a bond is connected, which atom is connected, which atom by a bond. We have other um, shorthand forms where we don't put the hydrogens in, but because when it's on a carbon, a little point, so the point like that is, it's implied with the point. If I just get red, the point implies that there are hydrogens there, and you have to work out based on these bonds how many there should be. So for carbon, um, for an alkane, then you have four bonds. For an alkene, you have three bonds. And for uh, an alkyne, which I've got here, i just drag it over. For an alkyne, we have um, just two kinds of bonds. We've got a triple bond in the middle there, and we've got this here. Okay, so I'll just get rid of that. It's getting a bit messy on here now, but i just move some of these out of the way. Oops. Move that out of the way. I'll just delete that actually. Okay. I've deleted all my paracetamol. Right. So the point implies that the CHs are missing. Now that can be a bit confusing and a lot of students get, get confused with this kind of um, drawing. What we've not done as well, I'm just going to end it in a second, but what we haven't done in this basic tutorial is going about the actual structure, the stereochemistry of that um, of that carbon. Now carbon is actually, for alkanes, is what's called tetrahedral. And so if I try and draw it in 3D here, and what I'll do, I'll put a model up, um, a 3D model that you can play around with on the website you'll see the tetrahedral structure there. So if I just draw methane, which is this, you have this structure. And this is another way of writing. Um, I just want to delete that a little bit there. Actually. Not that out there. This is another way of writing um, the structure of organic molecules, is put this three-dimensional effect in. So what this means is, if I draw um, a box here, I can draw a box. Um, just do that, change that to blue. I'm trying to work out how to do this. So I'll draw a plane here, if I can. That went terribly wrong. I wasn't meant to do that. So I'll draw that as blue. Take that colour out, that's what I wanted to do. Okay. So imagine this square box here is the plane. Now this hydrogen and this hydrogen and this carbon are all in that plane, so on the sheet of paper, or if you're watching this, on the screen. So these are all flat on the screen. Now what this means here, when it's dark, means that this is coming out of the screen. So this is, oops, I don't know why I did that. So this is coming out of the screen, towards you, like that. And what this means here is it's going behind you, it's going back into the screen. So these dashed lines here mean it's going back into the screen. And that gives us a like a 2D representation of a three-dimensional structure. 
So I'm going to end the tutorial there, just because this was just an overview, and I'll go into a bit more detail about the naming of the alkanes and alkenes and alkynes, and also put a few more uh, structures up so you can practice. So that is uh, a basic introduction to um, drawing organic molecules.